In previous classes, you've learned how to define dynamic blocks by inserting parameters and actions separately. Now in this class, you'll learn how to insert both elements in a dynamic block at the same time. So let's apply two stretch constraints to this bathtub block. After opening the block file, double click the drawing to open the block editor. Select the Parameter Set tab on the Block Authoring palette. Take a look at this. There is a set of registered parameters and actions on this tab. Let's select the Linear Stretch option. Next, the program requests you to select two points on the part. See how after selecting these points, the parameter and the action are inserted in the part in just one single step. See there is also an exclamation point next to the action. This shows there are no selected objects for the action. Now let's select the elements which will be changed. Right click the action to do this. You need to select Action Selection Set on the new menu and then the Modify Selection Set option. Now let's define the box to define the element limits which will undergo modifications and then select the entities. See how the action doesn't show the exclamation point anymore. This shows it has been completely defined. Now apply the same set of parameters and action to the length of the block. Now let's click Test Block to test the block. See how when you move the grips, the bathtub size increases or decreases. Also notice how when you decrease the bathtub size, the geometry gets misshaped. To avoid this, let's define a minimum size for linear parameters. Now return to the block editor, select the width parameter to access its properties. Let's type 600 in the value set field in the dist minimum group. Then for the length, select the respective parameter and type 900. So this is how you can quickly define the settings for a dynamic block. And in this way, you can define any type of dynamic block using these ready-made sets. So as you've already studied, to define elements that will undergo changes from inserted action, you must change the entity selection. Right-click the action to make this change. Then select Action Selection Set and Modify Selection Set on the new menu. After that, you need to select the entities requested in the command line. This process can also be used to change the selection of manually applied actions. So in this class, you learned about defining dynamic blocks by inserting parameters and actions at the same time.
You also learned how to select actions inserted in blocks.